Right, it's back. It's good to be back doing these day texts. Sorry, it took me a few extra seconds there. Those of you in the chat know, excuse me, what I'm talking about. I had a little out of focus issue with the camera, so I didn't want to show up with a blurry face. I figured even my my real face is better than a blurry face. <laughs> it's good to be back. Thank you all for joining me. I love doing these day texts. I hope you do too. Uh, but like you, I do get busy at times and I have to deal with things, so I can't always, um, at least right now, do them every day. It took me a few extra seconds there, though. Okay, we'll get the sound right, too. And so, however, it's only temporary. I've just got some special things I'm involved with, all of which are good, are providing me with great opportunities to do things that I've wanted to do and that I believe will allow me to um, further expand um, what I'm trying to accomplish both vocationally and of course in praising Jah. So but that's what we're here for, right? To praise Jah. So that's what I want to get to. And then we'll get to the things that we all have to do other than praise Jah. But even when we do things like work, school, or play, we can still praise Jah. We just can't do it in exactly this way. So that's why we do these day texts. They give us a unique opportunity to focus on the material, show corroborating or illustrative evidence, information that we can all use, benefit from, share with other people, maybe when we're doing work, play, or school. But that's not always easy to do, right? We can't just break into a discussion of Jahuwah or Genesis or Jesus. Not usually, unless there's a good opening, a good opportunity someone asks us or we see um, something maybe that is Jaws using to, to show us the way, which always does happen or will happen at some point in everyone's life. If you follow Jah, if you follow the ways of Jesus, you'll see things, you'll be involved with things. They'll use you. And so that's why I'm here. I want to try to help you benefit myself, of course, and do the things I'm told to do, teach others, help others. But I want to make you effective in doing the same things. I know most of you already are. Some of you are new. But either way, if we can make each other more effective, that's the point of these day texts. To praise Jah, gather together at the start of our day, progressively work through this material. And whether you believe in Jah or God or Jesus or not, I think you'll benefit from the discussion because you'll understand better where we're coming from. And that's very important for people who don't, you know, believe in Christianity or accept the things that Christians or those who believe in the Bible do. Excuse me. So by better understanding, at least, that our, our beliefs, our beliefs, are, are based on what we consider the best evidence, then I, I think it will make it better for us all to relate to one another, regardless of who we worship or whether we worship nothing ourselves or whatever right but we still have to be together on some level while we have a stable society while we have laws and expectations for social behavior not all of which can be met but that give us guides to try to work together and we find that treating each other the way we want to be treated our third most important thing is how we can best satisfy pretty much everything and also show worship to Jah, just like Jesus said. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get to the text. We've talked about Genesis. We've completed what I consider the first account of creation, Genesis 1. 1 through, um, I believe it was 35. I renumbered the text. And then what I did was, if you're following on my discussion forum, CW Jaw Discussion, you know that there I keep the most up-to-date texts. And so you get the first notice when I've updated the texts. I'm working primarily in Proverbs. I'm pretty close. Of course, that's relative to the time, right, that I have available to actually complete everything. But material-wise, if I get enough time and the time is right, quality time, and I can get the translation done, then I expect to finish with Proverbs, Greek, and Hebrew, the whole thing with notes, historical information, critical stuff, and an updated appendix, which will be my article 
uh, at least one appendix with my um, Ja loves her wisdom, his son, the word, with more information identifying Jesus as wisdom of, for example, texts like Proverbs 8 and other texts that were associated with figures like wisdom and the word that saw them as actual spiritual beings, maybe not fully in, in terms of fully understanding them, but there was a definite association in texts like Proverbs and in other texts and by Jesus himself. If you read my article on my Watching the Ministry blog, uh, that he is the wisdom um, spoken of in texts like Proverbs 8. So we're going to get to that in, in more detail when I publish the uh, Proverbs translation. And uh, But I took time away from that. Like when, when we restarted with Genesis, I knew I was going to get to these texts that we're doing today, which I just translated last week, last couple of weeks really. And I spent some, I took some time away, which is in part why I didn't do the day texts, as well as work-related reasons. But I wanted to get my mind back into Genesis in a translation sense, not just in reading the translations I had done today, but it gave me the perfect opportunity to, to get back into it, because we're doing the day texts. And then when I started reading through it, I realized, okay, you know, I'm, we'll be able to explain the first account of creation. We get into the second, and it's sort of in pieces. Um, so I felt I needed to finish up the accounts of creation before we move on so that I can fully explain and that everyone has a complete sense of the Genesis accounts of creation according to the text as I've translated them. And so basically in order to keep the numbering consistent, there's, there's no new chapter 2, 1 through 4. That's just what the extended texts from Genesis are, verses 32 through 35. And in the translation, I note see this text. So it it's, makes it fairly seamless when you're reading the text of Genesis because people are going to know there's a difference in the numbering, but not really in the text. A little bit, of course. But it's really the sense of separation that I'm trying to maintain in the correct way, what I believe in terms of the creation of these two accounts. Okay, so why am I saying that again? We talked about it previously. Well, we're just starting the next account. So I want you to understand why we're starting in verse 5, of course, if you haven't already. If you're on the forum, you kind of can see what I'm doing. And um, so I'm explaining it more here for those who aren't or who haven't seen the new text yet. So really, I guess if you wanted to follow along with your translation, if you're not using mine, then any other translation you use, today's day text is going to be Genesis 2, 1 through 4. Uh, so, and I'll probably put that somewhere in here. I, I put it in the Genesis 1, 32 through 35 texts. But I'll probably, I'll probably, I haven't made that correspondence here with 1, 32 through 35. That is in this 2, 5 through 9 text grouping. So I, I'll do that. I'll change it as, necess, as needed. And sometimes I'm working with limited title space with uh, YouTube. But I definitely want to make a connection here with the, the, the chapter 1 verse groupings, like I did with chapter 2 in the 1. Okay, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. Otherwise, just... Just understand that in my view, there's there's two accounts of creation, pretty much like in most people's view. But I don't see the first account of creation ending where it appears many translations and other people tend to view it. So I view this, the start of this reading, that is in, in any other translation, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, or what I consider Genesis 2, verse 5, uh, well, it wouldn't necessarily, no, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be in any, in any other translation. It, it should actually be consistent here. I apologize. I got caught up into talking about the chapter 1 and chapter or chapter 2, 1 through 4 texts. So, and, I, and then I stated that um, something incorrect about uh, 5 through 9. So, pretty much, if you're reading any translation other than mine, it should be consistent from here. But that doesn't mean that those translations also view the accounts of creation the same. 
right? I think they tend to view it as starting in verse 1 of chapter 2. So that's primarily one of the issues involved with the renumbering of the text in my translation. Okay, so with that in mind, we're beginning the account of the, the second of, account of creation in Genesis in verse 5 of Genesis chapter 2. I'll read the Hebrew translation, then the Greek. <clears throat> I better get a little water. I've been talking a lot. Excuse me. I've learned it's better to do that, though, than to try to just, you know, keep going, especially if you have water nearby, right? Okay, verse 5, chapter 2, second account of creation. Now each plant belonging to the land had not yet come to be in the earth, and each herb of the field had not yet sprouted, because Jehovah God had not yet rained upon the earth, and there was no Adam to work the ground. Verse 5, Greek translation, Now it was before each green plant came to be on the land, and before all grass of the field stood up, for God had not sent rain upon the earth, and there was no man to work the land. Verse 6, Hebrew translation, But a mist would go up from the earth, and it had watered all the surfaces of the land. Verse 6, Greek translation, But a spring would go up out of the earth, and it was giving drink to every surface of the land. Verse 7, Hebrew translation, Then Jehovah God began to form the man, or the Adam, from the particles of the ground. And he began to blow in, blow, excuse me, breath of life into his face. And the man, or Adam, gradually became a living person, or soul. Verse 7, Greek translation, Then God formed the man, soil from the earth. He breathed into man's face a wind of life, and the man became a living soul or person. Verse 8, Hebrew translation, Jehovah God began to plant a special area or garden in Eden by the east, and he put the man there, the one whom he had formed. Verse 8, Greek translation, Lord Jehovah God planted a paradise in Eden, eastward. There he placed the man whom he had formed. Verse 9, last text of our day text today, Hebrew translation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then Jehovah God began to sprout from the ground every tree that is desirable in appearance and good for food, and a tree of life in the middle of the special area, and a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse 9, last day text today, Greek translation. God even sprouted from the ground every tree beautiful for appearance and good for food, and the tree of life in the middle of the paradise, and the tree used to learn knowledge, both good and evil. Okay, a lot of information here, as there always is in these day texts, but I grouped it this way because as you'll see in our next reading, it, it's still related, of course, in the account, continues on, but it's talking about the location of Eden, and, and we're going to focus on that. It refers specifically to the rivers, four rivers that formed into one, and some features of the surrounding area. And I'm, we're going to focus on that in um, either tomorrow or Sunday's day text. Although, I'll give you an update at the end of the show. My schedule uh, for pretty much the next four days is going to make it hard to immediately continue our readings. But we'll talk more about it right after the show. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to these texts. Genesis 2, 5 through 9. So what did we go through? So in this account, what's happening? 
it starts out by going back, right? According to the descriptions, it's going back to the time when the plant belonging to the land had not yet come to be in the earth and the herbs had not yet sprouted because there was no rain and there was no man to work the ground. So this is before, in terms of our prior reading of the first day of creation, Genesis 1, this is before the creation of man. And it's right at the point, really, where Jehovah is bringing forth all of the green growth, plants, trees, everything bearing seed, we're really coming right back to that point, which is why it sets up the description as there not yet being a time. The land is there, right? If you go back to the prior videos or just the Genesis 1 reading that we did, and you can find it in the description if you're not a part of the CW job form, um, then you know that the succession of days, and they're not literal 24-hour days, at least certainly not all of them, right? Because... It wasn't until several days into the creation account that there were even moon, sun, or stars, four signs, fixed periods, days, and years. Exactly like it says. And yet before that time, there were what were considered days or times, periods of light. There was even a time before light had come to be. When darkness was covering the surface of the earth the watery surfaces of the earth, which jaw receded and brought forth land. At which time, he, he, he first he, of course, began, he made the expanse so that he had the separation, sky heavens, the expanse, and now we're back at the point where he's bringing forth all the trees and plants of the land. It says, no rain, no man, but there was a mist, a mist that would go up. And so let's talk a little bit about that. Well, first, in terms of like things like the herbs, you notice that the text refers to herbs. Let me just get this here. In verse 5, it referred to the plants in the earth, the herbs had not yet sprouted. And so the mist, all right, so let's go to the mist first and talk about that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the feed was still good. I had a little issue there. Okay, so getting back to this, let me make it here so we cover that. Let's just read a, a brief section here. This is just from Wikipedia. This is not controversial. You know, often if we're not dealing with something that could be questioned, really, it's not an issue, it's basically accepted, then I'm going to go to the most common and available source. It's not like a big deal. So let's look and see what it says about mist real briefly here. Mist is a phenomenon caused by small droplets of water suspended in air. Physically, is it, a, it is an example of a dispersion. It is most commonly seen where warm, Moist air meets sudden cooling, such as in exhaled air in the winter or when throwing water onto a hot stove of a sauna. It can be created artificially with aerosol can canisters if the humidity and temperature conditions are right. It can also occur as part of natural weather when humid air cools rapidly. For example, when the air comes into contact with surfaces that are much cooler than the air. <clears throat> and so this is the condition in which Jehovah was making all of the things in the earth. And prior to the time, for example, when the sun and moon and stars were there, providing this light, these photons and radiation, Jehovah was providing it either directly or through other sources like the electromagnetic spectrum that he may have created and maintained at that point. The text specifically says in Genesis, before the sun, moon, and stars, light was created by Jah. And that the sun, moon, and stars were simply made as sources. So whatever was before them, 
It was Ja. He was making everything, generating all that was necessary to create what he then made. And then he set in place things that would not only provide sources of light that he had made, but do so in an organized manner of rotation that would allow us to have fixed periods, signs like eclipses, and to be used for days and years and more. And that's exactly what they do in ways that cannot be explained naturally. It's not accidental um, that these things are occurring with such precision and rotation that we can base our whole existence around them. Let me just make sure the source is going okay. Okay, no cut in the source. Just checking your comments, so I want to make sure. I noticed a little change in the source, but it doesn't look like it affected anything, so good. All right, now, so there was no mist yet, the text says. Oh, oh I did that. I think I... <laughs> Keep hitting the wrong source button. I apologize if there's any. If you notice any change in the video or audio, let me know. Uh, there's just one little button there that I accidentally hit a couple times on my uh, software. Doesn't look like a big deal, but I want to make sure. I don't want to just keep going if I changed anything. So with that said, so we have the mist, right? We have the mist that's coming up, watering the ground, and that's very important because... As you're going to see when it comes to the composition of the soil that's used to make Adam, well, it's filled with a number of things, all of which we're made of as well, in large part. And so it goes on to say that Jah formed Adam. We're com we commonly read from the dust, but I mean, I just, that just doesn't seem like a. I guess that's correct, because dust is basically the same thing as particles of the ground. But it's just not, I just don't get the sense from dust, as a user of the word dust, that it fits this account. And so I chose particles of the ground. Because Jahawa would have been dealing with the freshest soil, uh, I mean, the newest, brand newest, rising through the water land that he was now preparing in order to give forth plants, trees, seed-bearing fruit, herbs, and from which he was going to make man. So it says, the, the literal word is ground, the, the, the dry ground. That's what the term in the text is, the, the dry ground. But that's the, the topsoil. So what would the dry ground have been like back then? Well. Let's take a look at what it is like now. What's our soil like now? Let me just get this uh, set up right here for you. I think that's a good, that should show well. So in terms of soil, this is from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, uh, Manoa Soil Nutrient Management for Maui County. It just came up and it seemed like it was a, a succinct presentation of information so I felt I could just go ahead and use it. Let me uh, make it a little smaller here. That should be readable for, for everyone. Okay, so notice here it says soil composition is an important aspect of nutrient management. When While soil minerals and organic matter hold and store nutrients, soil water is what readily provides nutrients for plant uptake. Okay, so what did we just read? And how did the Genesis account describe creation? It described the earth covered with water and then the water being pulled back, land appearing. Of course, we have the sky heavens, the expanse. And then it says here that before there were plants and trees sprouting in the earth, a mist would do what? It would give drink. It would water every surface of the ground. Look at what it says. While soil minerals and organic matter hold and store nutrients, soil water 
is what readily provides nutrients for plant uptake. Genesis is just so accurate. I mean, in the, in the, in the details and everything. And, and that's because I believe it was written by one who was listening to one of the ones or even two, both of them, who were there doing these things along with all the others. But that's my religious view based on the extended discussion in the text. Let's get back to these descriptions of the more, I'll say, scientific presentation of information because it's what we can demonstrate. It's what we can show is actually happening. It's scientific. This is what happens. Exactly what Genesis describes, water giving drink to the land, that's how it described it, is necessary before you can have plants and trees uptake, take it up, and then, of course, grow. And notice, too, soil air. There's air in the soil, gas, or air, you know, um, elements. Plays an integral role since many of the microorganisms that live in the soil need air. See, they, all of these things, the expanse, sky heavens, the mist, their effect on the land preceded and was necessary for the growth of plants and trees and for all the insects and microorganisms to exist. And of course, as we're going to get to in a moment, we wouldn't even be here unless the land was here and made ready like this. Let's just read a little more. The basic components of soil are minerals, organic matter, water, and air. The typical soil consists of approximately 45% mineral, 5% organic matter, 20 to 30% water, and 20 to 30% air. These percentages are only generalizations at best. In reality, the soil is very complex and dynamic. The composition of the soil can fluctuate on a daily basis depending on numerous factors such as water supply. Let me make sure you guys can see all this. Excuse me. Cultivation and or soil type. Let that sink in for a moment because there's a lot there. Right? What do we often talk about on this channel when it comes to the soil and the sediments of the earth? Dating, right? Dating all these fossils and bones and things that aren't datable the, the way people think. Stone. They're dating the stone, the fossils, because of all of the soil surrounding it, the contents that may not be anything related to the bone or fossil in terms of a living thing. And they often will date things like charcoal or plant life, organic material, and try to date it to the same time as the fossil. But those plants, if, especially if they're trees and things that live a long time, they not, may not be from the same time as the fossil. There could be trees that grew after the animal died and continued to grow and to die and to continue to fill the soil with all that settlement, uh, sediment, I'm sorry, as, in, as it settled into the soil. Notice here again, these percentages, the 45%, 5%, 20 and 20, are generalizations at best. The reality is soil is very complex, dynamic. The composition fluctuates on a daily basis. Now, they're dating things that died millions of years ago, they say, based on things that are in the soil surrounding the fossil. <laughs> so, there's no analysis provided along with these dates and these field analysis that try to parse the soil sediments in ways that would give us any kind of confidence that the sediments they're dating are reliable indicators of the fossil. And yet they just go with it. In spite of all of this readily available information, 
It's scientifically proven because we exist with soil. <laughs> we watch it get affected on a daily basis and over time. And so there are numerous things. Water supply. Think of the amount of water released in the flood. Cultivation practices, all this stuff that change over time. So when people try to date things like fossils using sediment surrounding it, it's, to me it's laughable. It really is. The idea that they're pinpointing the exact piece of sediment datable to the time of the fossil is just ridiculous. It's certainly not justifiable based on what they're pre presenting, right? The data, the evidence, the argumentation for their sedim selective sedimentation uh, dating process is, is not convincing if, if they're at all. All right, so let's get back to the soil. So uh, let's just finish off here a little, little chart there to give you an idea of, of what the soil is made of in general. The solid phase of soil, which can, includes minerals and organic matter, are generally stable in nature. If organic matter is not properly managed, it may be depleted from soil. Well, who's managing this stuff? Who's been managing this stuff since the beginning? According to Genesis, it's Jahuwah. The liquid and gas phases of the soil, which are water and air respectively, are the most dynamic properties of the soil. The relative amounts of water and air in the soil are constantly changing as the soil wets and dries. Okay, so with that in mind, now let's take a look and see what we're made of, right? Because according to the text, Jahuwah formed, in the Greek text uses a form of plosso, just, just like it talks about him forming the earth and other things in ways that may be forming out of existing matter or out of just what he generates from himself. It's hard to say. You have the Hebrew word and you have certain times Greek words that can be used to convey different shades of meaning. I don't think there's any question here. Obviously, the text is very descriptive. That it's from existing material, that is, the particles of the earth. So it's very clear, we don't have to guess, that he's forming man from these existing particles. We just read what soil, and that's soil today, right? Think of the soil, the richness of the soil, and the soil type that Jehovah God made in the beginning as the proper starting place for all of the things that he would allow to grow and on which we would survive, not just us, animal kind, dinosaurs, massive creatures. So the, the soil at that time would have been far more powerful. And it even says, as we'll read in later Genesis texts, that the earth would no longer give its power because of the curses brought about by sin. But setting that aside for a moment, the fact is, just, just looking at it historically, and the fossil evidence we have of, of paleo plant life, and then the creatures that we know existed, the size, the insects, the, the, the ocean creatures. We were bigger. The soil was more powerful. But even this soil, even what we have and that we analyze today, as we just read, composed of these things, 25% air, 45% mineral, 25% water, and 5% other material, well, we are at 3% nitrogen, 10% hydrogen, 18% carbon, 65% oxygen in terms of, of the main elements, but we're also minerals that come from the earth. Calcium, phosphorus, sodium, magnesium, sulfur, all these things are you can find in the earth or as part of the soil, or at least according to the account they were back then, in ways that Jehovah could use and form into man so that we have a structure made of bones built of calcium and other minerals together that hold our structure in place over time. We have all kinds of minerals in our body even in trace amounts 
that are very important, even things like gold and silver and trace amounts that also, again, are found in the earth. So the Genesis account, once again, is consistent as it has been with everything to this point. I was reading this part here. I don't think you all saw it. This little grid on the side here showing the uh, other elements of the body that I, were, I was reading and their percentages. And so you can see here after the main elements, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. And remember, soil has air in it. It has water in it. And we're primarily composed of water. Right. It, it, and so in terms of the elements and things, these are the primary elements. But our our mass, human mass, is is mostly water. And so that's in the soil. It was in, included in the soil, even apart from rain in the biblical account by the mist. So, see, the Bible, it doesn't just leave off details and things like, um, you know, it hadn't rained. And so there were no trees yet. And so Jehovah God started to make trees and then form man. No, no, it says that it had not rained yet. There were no plants. There was no man. But there was a mist, right? There was a mist that would come up and do what? Give drink to the land. Giving drink. This is our day text reading from the description below. It's what I read earlier. The mist was giving drink to the land so that the land could even produce the trees and things. Because as we read, unless it does that, Oh, where'd that go? Unless it does that, then plants cannot uptake the water to grow. Humans are composed mostly of water. So before the things that needed water could be made, and before there was rain, the account is so aware of what happened because that's what would have needed to have happened, right? We had to have water in the dry land before we could have plants, trees, and humans. But the account goes out of its way. Instead of having a separation, waters above and below, instead of saying, you know, it would rain occasionally and provide these things, water to the soil, and then Jehovah, God brought rain so that he could make the plants, and then make man. No. It says there was no rain yet. But a mist would come up. And give drink to the land. So the Genesis account cannot be ignored. It is it's more accurate than you would expect. And it's not. And, I, and the reason for that is because in my view. It's not trying to be more accurate in, than it is. It's, it's just describing either what was believed or what the writer was told by those who did it. <laughs> One way or the other, there's just no reason for that detail, in my view, to exclude rainwater, but then to add it through the use of this mist, and yet it all be so critical to the next two things that happen. In fact, this second account is so amazing that the, the day of creation it goes back to and the things that it's dealing with, first with plants and then with humans, <clears throat> it goes back to them and specifically addresses what would have to exist. That is a mist giving drink to the land before what it's going to describe as happening could even happen. It's amazing. And what does it say? It goes on to talk about how once that happened, once the mist would come, give drink to the land, 
Jehovah God would make sprout from the land all the plants and what all the trees that were beautiful to look upon and the trees to use for food and the tree of life in the in, clo in the special area it seems to refer only to the and not it's hard to say to what extent all of these trees were made in the special area but it singles out as i read it the tree of life as being in the special area, in the paradise. Either way, and, and it looks also like the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil as is, is associated with it in that area. And it may be that all these trees and things are, is, are included in, in what Jehovah went on to make as a special place, an enclosure, a garden. That's why that word's used. But I believe special place because it also refers, in a general sense, to all of these things happening, it seems, throughout the earth in ways where it makes the place he chose to work on in the east special. And then you see all these trees, these beautiful things of the earth. Remember, beautiful to look upon and for food. So they have, they're both there. And we're going to get into the account involving Eve and, and Satan later and how when she looked at the tree, it was beautiful to look upon. But for now, just note that the trees are made distinct in their description. Right? They're called trees that are beautiful to look upon and trees that are beautiful for food. And our, I mean, when you look at these trees, it's like they're not real, right? But, but they are. These trees are unbelievable in terms of their beauty and the way we see them, all these things. I don't think there's a person alive who wouldn't be awed. They might call it a happy accident, right? Like we've seen. But they would, they would look at it in a marvelous way, not as something negative. A couple of these things may be artificially colored here. So <laughs> you get a lot of creative nuts as we've seen. But most of these are just straight up beautiful things but then you have as we've seen i'm going to show again the fruit trees right so those are trees that we saw a moment ago that are just beautiful to look upon right all these things and the stuff <laughs> but then you have the fruit all this beautiful fruit it not only looks beautiful right doesn't it look Beautiful? It does. It's got beautiful purples and red, all these colors, and it just looks delicious. <clears throat> it looks like something you want to eat, and so we do. And they taste good. Cherries, all these berries, apples, pears. Pears, they have a nice soft texture. When you, I don't know if you like pears. I like pears. I like apples too, but they have different tastes, different textures pomegranates so many fruits well there's at least 2000 according to just this i just typed in you know how many fruits are there let's see here how many uh they show well they give an alphabetical listing i'll put the link below an alph alphabetical listing of fruits they're all combined in there apple apricot avocado bayou acacia or acai acerola American May apple, African cherry, orange, there's so many fruits. And of course, we've had other fruits in the past. There would have had to have been more or certainly bigger collections of fruit for the types of creatures that existed in the past. And we get all these nuts, <laughs> oranges, the real nuts, right? You know, like walnuts and different kinds of nuts and things bananas <laughs> so um, when we talk about the 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 account and the descriptions that we read in terms of the garden and the things that Jehovah god made there i didn't even show images of the grass it talked about the grass of the fields standing up you should do that type in a search show me different types of grass 
I'll try to do it real quick back here. Types of grass. Because I know <laughs> if I can get <laughs> different types of stuff, I'll show you here. <clears throat> you know, we only, and I don't, I didn't really show you the herbs either. I do have some herb pictures I want to show. So this is just different types of grass and things that exist on the earth. And grass is just grass, right? There's a lot of different types of grass. Let's find out how many types. How many? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand grass species and about seven hundred and seventy-one genera that are classified into twelve subfamilies. So I mean <laughs> We have a lot of plants, trees, and grass, and herbs. I want to show you those because I brought that page up, but I don't believe I showed you all the herbs. These were also specifically referenced, and herbs, of course, provide, provide flavoring, have medicinal uses. There's so many different things that are described in Genesis. Plants, trees, herbs, grass, seed bearing fruit and herbs and all described in proper relation to the ground the mist the expanse sky heavens and man they have so many different herbs and of course many of us know them use them in cooking in various things in our gardens we could go on and on let's do a check how many at least that we know right and of course we're looking at now. We're reading a text that was written or written about events that occurred, in my view, about 6,000 years ago. And not, not all the creation days. I'm talking about the creation of man and plants. You know, that would potentially be earlier. I'm not, it doesn't give us specific periods of time for each day. So I can't tell how much time passed, for example, between the creation of the land, plants, and trees and man. But it's not necessary. My point is that we only know a limited extent of these things. And there likely were many others before in order to sustain the life that we have on earth or that we can show existed on earth in the past. It's not giving an exact number, is it, like it did for the other things? Types of herbs. List of herbs. Over 400 healing herbs. How many herbs? Oh, how many hmm. Well, it's not really giving a specific number. But I'm pretty sure, so at least 400 they associate with healing properties. And I'm just doing a check sample here. We know there are lots of them. So if you want to follow up further on that and get a specific number, let me know and put it in the comments below. But that, that number didn't show up as easily as the others. Nonetheless, we have all these things that are corroborated in the text. The mist providing the water and the dry land necessary for uptake into the plants that would follow the soil composition being minerals organic matter water and air matching our composition we talked about all the different beautiful trees and things that you know we could go on and on and review and show and marvel at because <laughs> we know how we are when when we see these things and when the light hits them or just closely evaluate their leaves and their branches and the strength of the tree. We use it for so many things in addition to beholding its beauty. And then of course, all of the food and fruits and vitamins and, and nutrients that we receive from these things. And there are just, there's more than we could probably sample in our lifetime, right? 2000, let me get in there. We read it, but we need to know how many herbs. I'd like to know that if you can find it out because that number didn't come up.
but we have at least 12,000 species of grass in the world and 20,000 different types. I'm sorry, 2,000 different types of fruit. So I think we covered today's text fairly well. And I believe it clearly shows that once again, Genesis is a reliable text. It's showing us what's really going on and has been going on since the beginning. It provides us with evidence that we can use to show people that the text that we're promoting, far from being myths or these legendary descriptions of events, they're nothing like that at all. They're exactly like the way we find planets when we come upon them now where they're formless and void, swirling winds. This one, our planet's been formed. It was worked on, was chosen by Jah, and the ways that are described in the first account and so far in this second account are what we can show would had to have taken place. Even if you believe it all took place because of an accident. We don't believe that. We don't believe accidents happen like that or that a accidents happen right, right? Accidents are things that go wrong when something was supposed to go right. None of this is wrong. All of it is right. How could it be an accident then? So the weight, the argument is uh, on the, the weight is on those who would say it's not correct. It's incorrect because we can show it is correct. And I'm not aware of any credible argument that would take away from anything we've been discussing about the things we've been reading in Genesis. So stay with me. Let's get through this second account of creation. I think it only gets better from here. I'm going to do my best. Um, to translate the rest, at least of the connecting texts, I've done a, another section of chapter 2 and parts of chapter 3 and, and another sections of Genesis. So I'm going to look and see how much I can do. I'm going to connect the rest of chapter 2. So be looking for that if you're on the forum. And then once I'm done with the next section, I'll put it up. And then that'll be our next day text. And we're going to get into the location of Eden. And I'm going to show evidence that once again supports the Bible's description of things that it could not have known were true. Unless that's what they really were. That is true. Someone had to know what took place in order for the things that I'm going to show you regarding Eden like with all these other things, someone would had to have known what to do because they're not accidental. They don't show signs of accidents. Even the narrative where it could exclude things like water and just say God's so powerful, he just took the dry land and blew into the man's uh, face the breath of life. It doesn't say that. Right? It goes out of its way to say no rain yet. And why would it do that? I believe because that's true. It said there was no rain yet because there was none yet. What was there? A mist. Right? So it goes, then it describes something else that fits and that accounts for what happens right after that. Right? In the second account of creation, it's not only correct in the first account. I mean, it doesn't talk about the mist specifically, but the order's correct. But this second account goes right back to that day of creation where the plants, trees are sprouting and says, No rain, but a mist gave drink to the land. And then Jehovah God made all the plants, trees, and man. Because we all needed water. And the water got into the land from the mist that existed when there was no rain yet. Now, let me talk a little bit more about our next day text. So I'm going to work on that translation about um, the location of Eden, the rivers, some of the surrounding features. I'm going to show more images, a lot of good stuff I've talked about before, plus some more stuff. And 
You know, I think it's going to continue to show that these texts are reliable. There's a reason why they were preserved. There's a reason why they're associated with people like Moses. Why they talk about people like Abraham, Avram, and all these other historical figures and events that we can show not only took place like the flood or existed like Eden, but what had to have been done in exactly this way by someone and not an accident. Accidents do not happen like this. They don't happen ever unless they're a mistake. Something was supposed to happen, but an accident occurred and messed it up, right? <laughs> they rarely, if ever, produce something better. And so they're never to be used as the rule, right? Everything's an accident according to people who don't believe in a creator. They're allowed to do that. We don't. We believe for these reasons, not for no reason, not because we reject science. We, we use science. Science proves Jah. It proves life is eternal. It proves life is intelligent. And it can be used with credible history to show that that, that that intelligent, eternal life is Jah. So we're going to keep promoting him and everything associated with him that we believe is reasonable to consider. And if people don't want to believe it, that's fine. They get to choose it. That's okay. We get to choose as well. So I'll be back. Let's see, my schedule's pretty busy. I've got some very important work-related things coming up in the next several days. And they're great. They're going to really allow me to do things I've been wanting to do for a long time. <laughs> You'll see. You'll learn more about it. Um, so, in either case, I don't want to go into it more at this point. I'm going to take care of that. And I'm going to keep doing these other things. I'm going to translate the rest of the Genesis text that's missing. And so then we can complete our day texts. At least to a point where we can finish this account, the second account of creation. And into chapter 3 with the, um, excuse me, <laughs> my phone right there, with the um, involvement of, of Satan and Adam and Eve. So stay tuned. We have a lot more coming, but I probably will not be back until it might be next Thursday or Friday. It's possible that I'll do a show tomorrow. Very unlikely but possible Sunday and then probably Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday I will be too busy um, with other commitments but I'll still be here and I'll do things that I can I'll be back to these texts as soon as possible be looking for on the forum if you see the translations go up the day text is next and then once I get to a, a point where we can just keep going uh, then we'll keep the day text more consistent. But I'm going to finish uh, the special stuff I've got here coming up. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I may be back tomorrow, so don't, don't think that's not possible. But in the meantime, do your best to be as productive as you can. Help as many people as possible. And praise Jah in Jesus' name.